What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Found Out the Truth, Part 1. No one understood why Issei couldn't confess to Rius. Rius couldn't take it and left Issei there. Everyone in the club room rebuked Issei and told him off, despite his genuine confusion on the matter. What happens when they realize their folly in time? What happens when Issei decides no more? Let's try to hit a thousand likes for episode one, and if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Thank you so much for all the support. Remember that stream will hopefully be sometime around, okay? Remember, please, thank you so much for the support. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter one, heartbreak. Issei, to you, what am I? Who am I? Asked Rius, her back to Issei. Um, to me, president is president, said Issei, slightly confused. Idiot, cried Rius. He voiced sounding as though she was crying, a sob escaping her throat. Rius rushed out of the club room. Azia rushed to the door, but paused to look back at Issei. Issei, you are horrible. It's too much. Why can't you, why can't you understand Rius' feelings, questioned Azia, tears in her eyes, confusing Issei, before she went after Rius. That wasn't right, Issei, said Kiba with a sigh. Not right? As in what? asked Issei in confusion. That exactly that. You, I can understand very well what the girls are going through, said Kiba, surrounding, sounding exasperated. Exactly. It is natural for Rias and Azia to get mad, scolded Akino, sounding angry as well. Even I, who is as dense as these sort of things, thought you were a bit off, Issei chimed in Zenovia. Issei. Sure is a no-no. Poor Rius, added Irina, sounding mad as well. You are the worst, said Konako in a cold voice. Issei, meanwhile, was utterly confused and had no idea why everyone was looking at him in such disappointment and anger. I don't get it. What did I do? Thought Issei before turning to Gasper. Hey, Gasper, am I really the bad guy here? Asked Issei desperately. Gasper seemed somewhat uncomfortable, but answered nevertheless. Um, yes, I think you are very bad, said Gasper timidly, causing Issei to drop to his knees. Um, this is my fault, of my mother, and I, right? I'm sorry, said Ravel, getting Issei to look at her strangely. How is this Ravel's fault? questioned Issei. Akuna walked over to Ravel and placed her hands on her shoulders. This isn't your fault, Ravel. Issei is the most at fault here, because he never tried to think about the crucial thing between Rias and himself until now, said Akuna kindly, causing Ravel to perk up. The atmosphere was so tense. Issei couldn't take it in and abruptly left the room, getting some surprised expressions from those in the club room. Do you think he will go to Rias and make things right? asked Yudo curiously. I hope so, Rias looked crushed, said Akino. I just don't understand why Issei keeps acting like this, said Zenobia with a sigh. Hopefully, Issei-senpai will fix everything, said Gasper. Hopefully. Line break. I don't understand. Why is everyone so angry with me? What did I do? thought Issei as he clenched his fist. I can't take this anymore. This sense of unknowing, not knowing if President loves me or not, if all the girls love me or not, or if, thought Issei before a face flashed in his mind. Will you die for me? Issei clenched his chest as he entered his house. Both parents were out shopping. Their new house required lots of supplies, after all. Issei chuckled dryly. <laughs> is that what all I was to them? The prize Red Dragon Emperor. Someone to show off in front of others, but never be honest with, thought Issei. The pain of that every thought caused him to scrunch his eyes up. Well, no more. I know it wasn't the best idea to continue to be such an open pervert. I love boobs so much, but it seems none of them take me seriously because of it, thought Issei, remembering the verbal assault he had just taken as he entered his room. No more. I can't do this anymore, shouted Issei internally as he started to cry. The sense of not knowing, the sense of fear, that feeling of uncertainty, thought Issei as he closed his eyes shut tightly. Will you die for me? repeated in his head. No more, it whispered Issei as he quickly packed a backpack with all of his needed from his room before heading down to the kitchen. No more, it muttered Issei sadly as he grabbed enough food to last him for weeks. No more, said Issei as he closed the door behind him and dropped his key on the mat. No more, shouted Issei as the red glow suddenly encompassed his being and a magic circle appeared in front of him. A massive amount of energy burst from Issei's form, so strong that everyone in Ko felt it, even those who were not magically aware. Will you die for me? Ugh, roared Issei in agony before he vanished in a burst of the red energy. Line break. 
Um, Kiba-senpai, said Gasper timidly. Someone, sometime after Issa had left the club room. Mm, what is it, Gasper? asked Kiba. Do you, I mean, was it fair of all of us to gang up on Issei like that? Asked Gasper. What do you mean, Gasper? We didn't gang up on him, replied Kiba. Well, I mean, he did seem to be really confused, added Ravel timidly. Hmm, you have a point. Issei did seem genuinely confused, but why, added Zenovia. Do you think we were a bit too hard on him, asked Irina. Well, Issei needs to understand how Rias feels. It is important to all of us as well. If Issei can't admit his feelings to Rias, then how is he- Oh, no, said Akino, suddenly coming to the realization. What is it, Akino? asked y Kiba. Issei couldn't admit his feelings to Rias. That was it, shouted Akino in realization. What do you mean, asked Irina. The last person Issei admitted his feelings to, said Akino, as he looked a shot appearance on her face, was Rainer said Konako, suddenly as her eyes widened. Kiba's eyes widened at this. Of course! How could we forget? shouted Kiba in horror. Um, what do you mean? Who is Rainer? asked Irina curiously. Issei's first and only girlfriend, one who he confessed his love to, but she was a fallen angel and she killed him. For the boosted gear, said Akino sadly. So do you think because of that he can't admit his feelings to anyone, not even Rias? asked Zenobia. Poor Issei, what have we done? whimpered Gasper. At that moment, a huge wave of power was felt, along with a pained and anguished roar. Is that Issei? Oh no, quick, we need to go find him, shouted Akino, before they all ran to the sound of his voice. Line break. Rias was currently crying in the bathroom, her eyes puffy and swollen. Um, Rias, are you okay? asked Azia kindly as she entered the bathroom and spotted Rias at the sinks. <sighs> Oh, I'm fine, Azia. What are you doing here? asked Rias. I came to check up on you. I mean, Issei isn't being very nice to you right now, which is unlike him, said Azia timidly. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Azia. I just can't get a straight answer from Issei, said Rias sadly. I'm sure he loves you, Rias. He would do anything for you, said Azia comfortably, as she walked over to Rias and patted her on the shoulder. I just don't know anymore. It was easy in the beginning. He was a blunt pervert who loved brass and said mine were the best. He fought tooth and nail to save me from Riser and from the other threats, said Rias fondly with a hiccup. I still remember when Issei first met me. He was so kind and honest and almost childlike, said Azia with a smile. Yeah, I remember when he woke up next to me for the first time. He was so nervous, commented Rias with a small smile. And I remember how he cried for me and called me his friend, even as I was dying in his arms. Issei wanted to make me happy, said Azia. The two reminisced in their memories for a moment before Rias remembered something. Although, after you died, he was heartbroken. His power rose dramatically, and he took down that fallen angel all by himself. I was so proud of him, said Rias. Yes, I heard that he defeated Rainer, all for my sake, said Azia fondly. The two smiled at this before they both came to the same realization. Rainer! They both cried before feeling an immense wave of power, and a loud, pained roar of anguish that actually shattered the myriads in the girls' bathroom. Oh no, quickly, Azia, come stand next to me, shouted Rias to Azia, who obliged, before a large red magic circle appeared under the two. The two disappeared in a flash of red and appeared just outside the gates of the Hyoto household. The two ran up to the door before stopping at the doormat. Rias slumped to her knees in shock, while Azia raised her hands to see her face in stiff and gasp. As she tried to hold back her tears, moments later, everyone from the clubroom arrived as well and saw both Azia and Rias crying. Akino looked to see what they were crying over, before she too cried as well. The rest of the girls did the same in turn, with Gasper crying as well when he saw the doormat, while Kiba clenched his fist in anger. There, on the mat of the Hyoto household, along with Issei's keys, were eat were eight pawn pieces. And that's the end of chapter one. Heartbreak. Chapter two. The truth hurts. But big brother, it's been almost a month now, cried Rias in annoyance. I'm sorry, Rias, but no one can find Issei. He expelled his pieces and thus is in a stray. But for some reason, we have no way of tracking him at all. This really isn't anything we can do. Also, I know it isn't something you want to think about right now, but we have postponed this match with Sarah Org long enough. You'll have to face him this week, said Sir Zex gravely. Well then, it's your lucky day, isn't it? Because I'm back, said a voice before a golden glow shone in the room, before Issei was revealed. Issei was clad in his school uniform, but he appeared noticeably buffer than before, his shirt and pants all strained against his body now, and his face thinned slightly, giving his features a sharper look. Impossible... Issei said in Rias in shock. That's right, it's me, Rias, said Issei with a smile on his face. 
Rhea smiled at this and went to run into Issei's arms before she felt herself being held back. When she turned to yell at the person holding her back, she saw her brother, with an unusual stern expression. Yes, Rhea, I'm back. Not for you, of course. I'm back for school. It's been over a month, after all, and I can't fall behind in my studies, said Issei mockingly with a smirk on his face. What are you talking about, Issei? questioned Rias in confusion. Rias, 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 said Issei, as he shook his head, causing everyone in the room to look at Issei worriedly. Ironically, everyone in the room right now, with the addition of Sir Zex, were those, who, the, those before Issei left. You really are a spoiled little princess, aren't you? questioned Issei, as the look of anger appeared on his face. What do you mean? asked Rias, sounding a little hurt. I died. In your sick, twisted schemes. You could have told me to stay away from Rainer, after all. Even then, until just recently, I would have done anything you said. I died, and was brought back as a devil. Just you could get strong, peace. To get you out of your marriage to Riser. I nearly died doing it, too. I didn't care, though. I loved you, after all, said Issei, getting Rias to smile in joy before she heard his words properly. Loved? asked Rias hesitantly. Yes, love, because now... I hate you, Rias Grimry, snarled Issei, driving a stake right through Rias' heart and shocking everyone in the room. W why What do you mean? asked Rissei tearfully. Rias, Rias, tearfully. I did everything for you. I died for you and I risked my life and limb for you. I followed you into hell literally and figuratively. Just because you cared for me, or so I thought said Issei sourly. But I do care for you, Issei. I love you, shouted Rias in tears. Oh, do you know? asked Issei, with a deadly flat tone. Yes, Issei, I love you with all my heart and soul, and want to spend the rest of our lives together, cried Rias. Words, nothing but sweet words, the very same words I would have died to hear from you just a month ago. But now, they mean absolutely nothing to me, said Issei, getting Rias to gasp. You only ever thought about yourself. Well, I did my best to have you accept and the truth be told. You did to some extent. You never acted like a loved one. No, all this time you used me as you saw fit. Then, and here comes the kicker. When you couldn't get one thing from me, the one thing, do you know what you did? Asked Issei rhetorically. You broke what was left of my heart, said Issei in a cold tone, with shivers sent up the spine of everyone. I'm sorry, Issei cried Rias, openly weeping now. I didn't realize that Rainer hurt you that badly, continued Rias. I wonder why, said Issei coldly, getting Rias to stop crying momentarily. What do you mean? asked Rias in confusion. What I mean is that you never cared about me, shouted Issei, causing Rias to recoil. All this year, you've been using me, flaunting your red dragon emperor, sure. I got stronger under you, but what did you actually do? You might have been affectionate, physically with me, but emotionally they say no man is an island. But they have never met you, Rias Grimmery, hissed say. You never acknowledged my emotions. You knew I loved you, yet you toyed with me. Do you know how much that hurt me? I couldn't think. I didn't know the truth constantly asking myself, does she really love me as a partner? Then, no matter how many separate occasions you had to heal the nagging doubt in my heart and mind, what did you do? Of course, make it all about you. You, Rias Grimmery. Forget about Issei. Who cares if he had desperately seated emotional and trust issues? I just want him to say my name, because that means he loves me. Not like he hasn't proved it already, nearly dying for my sake. No, I need him to stay in my bloody name, shouted Issei, turning Rias into a sobbing mess. Issei breathed in for a moment before resuming. In any case, I am done with you, Rias Grimmery, but let me fill you in on what happened about a month ago, said Issei calmly, getting everyone to look at him, even sobbing Rias. You see, ejecting the evil pieces from my body should have killed me. It was only thanks to Drake sustaining my life force that I managed to survive. You nearly, literally, killed me. With your selfishness, said Issei before pausing. But then I saw an angel, once again quite literally, said Issei, getting gasped from Irina. That's right, Irina. I'm an angel now, just like you. Maybe not just like you, said Issei before his ten wings burst from his back. What? Ten wings? Already? But the color, said Irina in surprise. Yes, a little thanks to Drag. My wings are now the same red of my balance breaker. Although you want to know the best part, said Issei with a smirk. I can't fall. 
<laughs> laughed Issei, seeing the gob's masked expressions on their face. No way, shouted Irina in surprise. It's true. I have even already lost my virginity since having them, and did it a few more times after for good measure. I'll be an angel till the day I die, said Issei, dropping numerous revelations. What? asked Rias in shock. Oh, but I do believe I've gotten off topic. Ah, yes. Gabriel saving me, said Issei with a nod. Well, as you might have guessed, it wasn't easy turning me. Dre comes ahead a hefty price. No, matter the conversation system you use, said Issei proudly. So, does that mean you're a Gabriel's ace? asked Irina confusedly. Oh, heavens no. A simple ace would not be enough, said Issei cheerfully. No way, you can't mean, said Irina before trailing off at the end. That's right. Along with Dulio, I'm the other joker, confirmed Issei with, with a smirk. But do you want to know the really good part, Rias? said Issei, getting Rias to look at him attentively. When Gabriel found me, barely clinging to life, only inches away from death's door, do you know what she said to me? asked Issei. Rias remained silent. Those were her words exactly. I can see your heart is in pain. You have suffered much and gained little for this reason. I will give you a third chance at life. I won't ever turn on you or ask you for more than you can give. Know that you have my love forever and be strong. Become my joker, finished Issei before glaring at Rias. A woman, no, a literal angel, did for me in two minutes than you've done for me ever since I joined your little parage. It must mean that for someone who supposedly loves me, you have a terrible way of showing it. I suppose it is an, I suppose it is an appropriate though. Gabriel is an angel, and you are, in every sense of the word, a devil. Said Issei harshly. Rias couldn't take it anymore and just fled, just like before. Also, Sir Zek, since you are here, I suppose you should know. The little ceremony with Satan Red, that's all over now. I want nothing to do with Rias. Also, you should know that I have arranged for my Opai Dragon royalties to go on my own personal bank account, said Issei coolly. You know, Issei, don't you think you are being a bit harsh? Rias ex Explained what happened to me, and while I can agree with you that you didn't understand your feelings, isn't this a bit much? Questions for sex. I suggest you wake up from your ciscon delusions and realize just how shallow of a person Rias is, said Issei, getting Serzex to frown. She complicated how shallow Riser was, but she hurt me in ways you couldn't even imagine. Don't tell me this is too much, since I wanted to do a lot worse, but I promise Gabriel said Issei. Hmm, Issei, are you sure you mean that? asked Sir Zex, as his lips thinned. Go on then, you don't like it? Kill me! I'm sure when the other Satans find out you killed the Red Dragon Emperor, an angel, and a restarted the Great War, they happily indulge you in all your sin cost delusions, retorted Issei. You're playing a dangerous game here, Issei, warned Sir Zex. On the contrary, I'm done being played with, replied Issei firmly. Sir Zex didn't respond and merely disappeared back to the underworld, using a magic circle. Well, now that the main problem is out of the way, allow me to tell you what I think about all of you. For absolutely breaking me and pushing me to the point of no return, said Issei. Issei, we didn't know, said Akano before Issei cut her off. I'll deal with you last, said Issei harshly, causing Akano to recoil. Firstly, Zenovia and Irina. Zenovia, you yourself said you were dense. I guess that was right, since you were so dense you didn't realize how much pain I was in. Irina, for a supposed angel and supposed childhood friend, you suck at both roles, said Issei harshly, causing them to look down in shame. That being said, since neither of you were here when the event that scared me, scarred me for life took place, I can op- I can- overlay angry with you too. However, at this stage, I couldn't care less about either of you, said Issei indifferently. Gasper, you are actually my second favorite person in this room right now. I could tell that you, even during the verbal assault I took, were hesitant to add it, seeing that something was wrong with me. For that reason, I don't hate you, and do in fact acknowledge you, but you are a pretty bad friend, said Issei sadly, which caused Gasper to look down. Ravel, honestly, I hold none of this against you at all, said Issei, getting Ravel to look at him in surprise. You didn't say anything hurtful or even tried to apologize. For that, I am thankful, and right now, you are the only one I see as a friend of mine in this room, said Issei, with a smile before his face hardened. You, though, Azia, I am immensely annoyed with, said Issei, getting the former nun to look at him in surprise. 
I fought tooth and nail to save you from Rainier. I cried in agony when you died. I attacked Rainier in fury for what happened to you. And lastly, I begged Rias to save you. To give you a new life. You said I was your first friend. I wish I never was. The holy maiden who can heal all, even a devil, couldn't heal the pain in her supposed friend's heart. And in fact, thanks her friend is horrible, said Issei, getting Asia to cry in sadness. As for you three, said Issei, looking at Akino, Kiba, and Konako. Let's start with the littlest one first, said Issei, as he faced Konako. You who watched me from the shadows, from the beginning of it all. You, who fought with me in the church. You, who claimed to care for me. No, Konako, I'm not the worst. You are, said Issei in a flat tone. You know what's the best part, though? Questioned Issei rhetorically as Konako matched his gaze. In one month, I gained control over something that, to this day, terrifies you, said Issei, getting Konako to look at him with fearful eyes. That's right said Issei, before gathering Senjutsu Chakra around him. Although the best part is who taught me? Shirone, said Issei, getting Konako to look at him in panic. That's right, you know who. She also took my virginity. She is one feisty cat. That Kuroka, said Issei, shocking many. Now to you, pretty boy, said Issei, glaring at Kiba. You can understand what the girls are going through, huh? said Issei darkly. Issei, we didn't know, said Kiba weakly before Issei cut him off. Bullshit! You of all people, someone who has damaged so badly as a kid, you couldn't see the pain I was going through? All you could see was that entitled little princess felt, said Issei getting Kiba to frown. Issei, that isn't fair, said Kiba. Fair? <laughs> because it was totally fair for everyone to turn on me like that, huh? Questioned Issei, spitting out a word fair in anger before turning to Akino. And you said Issei to slightly frightened Akino. You, someone who had problems with the fallen angels your whole life, you couldn't see my pain, a pain which I recently helped you get through, questioned Issei. I'm so sorry, Issei, said Akino, tears beginning to form in her eyes. You know what I'm not sorry about, asked Issei coldly. I'm not sorry at all about the fact that I can't fall, because if I ended up becoming a fallen angel like you and that bitch Rainer, I might just kill myself, said Issei darkly. Will you die for me? Issei snarled momentarily before schooling his features. Well, in any case, that's all I have to say. Now, I think I will go to class, since I've missed so much already, said Issei before he left the club room, slamming the door behind him. What have we done? questioned Akino sadly, as she wiped her tears. We pushed Issei over the edge, it seems. It seems all of us turning on him was too much for him, said Kiba sadly. Do you think he will ever forgive us? asked Azia, with tears swimming in her eyes. I don't think so, said Kiba grimly. That's the end of chapter two, The Truth Hurts. Chapter three, Genetics. Kuroko was lazily swinging her legs over the arm of a large red grandfather chair. The rest of her was curled up against the back of it. She was humbly slightly, which caused Volley to look after her after a minute or two. You seem surprisingly cheerful, Kuroko, more than usual, I mean, said Volley. Hmm? Hmm, I guess that makes sense. I'm finally on track to achieving my goal, said Kuroko playfully. Which goal? asked Volley. To bring back the Nekamata race, of course said Kuroka cheerfully, still swinging her legs in happiness. Really now, with who? asked Volley, genuinely curious, since he was knew Kuroka would only accept a strong mate. <laughs> You're so funny, Volley. You're opposite, of course, said Kuroka with a giggle. Hyoto? I didn't think he had it in him, commented Volley with a raised eyebrow. Well, just recently, I had my eye on him. He had... I had him in me, purred Kuroka lustfully. Hmm, I must say, I'm surprised, said Volley disheartenedly. What do you mean? You didn't even pick up on my hint at all? said Kuroka with a pout. What hint? asked Volley distractedly. When I said he was your opposite, I meant that in more ways than one, said Kuroka seriously. Really? I know he has a red dragon, but how does that make him an opposite in more ways than one? asked Volley, bringing his attention back to Kuroka. Just think about it, Volley Lucifer, teased Kuroka, stressing the word Lucifer. Volley paused for a moment and mulled this over, before looking at her and raised an eyebrow and slightly disbelieving expression. You can't be serious, said Volley. He really is an angel, said Kuroka dreamily. The energy coming off him was irresistible, and the best part is he was perfectly fine with me being a devil, as well as a stray, and gave me exactly what you want, 
said Kuroka happily. Wouldn't an, age, an, wouldn't an angel fall having impure thoughts, not to mention sex with a devil? Queried Volley in interest. Well, as it turns out, he can't fall. I th think we figured that out. The eighth time we did it, said Kuroko thoughtfully. I see. How interesting, said Volley. Oh, and not only that, since we did it so much, while I was at it, I even restored the life force he lost from when he went into Juggernaut Drive a while ago, added Kuroka happily. Anything else? asked Volley curiously. Well, I did teach him Senjutsu as well, and he picked up really, really quickly, especially since every time he showed reasonable improvement. We did it again, said Kuroka happily. Very interesting. Perhaps the next time we fight, he even may be able to beat me, said Volley thoughtfully. Well, as long as he keeps beating me with his not-so-little dragon afterwards, I don't mind. It will take a lot for me to get pregnant outside of the mating season. But, at the very least, I can get plenty of, of practice in, purred Kuroka in anticipation. Scene break. Gabriel, are you sure this is the right thing to do? Asked Michael, having just a rather tense conversation with Sir Sex. Of course, Michael replied with the voluptuous, curly-haired blonde seraph, known as Gabriel. We couldn't just let the Red Dragon Emperor perish like that, and his heart was in so much pain. I had to help him. All he ever wanted was some unconditional love. So I gave him mine, said Gabriel pleasantly. Well, you do have a point. Losing Issei would have been disastrous, and the boy has rather pure heart. Whether that is the best is debatable, said Michael with a smile, which caused Gabriel to laugh. Well, I don't know about that, said Gabriel, before her beautiful, smiling visage became uncharacteristically serious. The pain he was in. He was utterly heartbroken, like no one I have ever seen before. Michael, if you saw him now on the surface, you would think he had only changed slightly. But I spent days with him, helping him acknowledge his heart and just what people mean to him. It wasn't easy, Michael. He was shattered and I barely managed to save him. Now, though, he has changed. However, I do believe it is for the better, as now he can open up to others once again, said Gary Beale with a frown sounding somewhat sad. I see. I did not know what Issei was suffering through so much, said Michael. Yes, it seems no one did, which is what pushed Issei to his breaking point, said Gabriel sadly. Scene break, now with Drake. Ah, uh, it feels good, Drake. I'm back and everything, I'm back and everything is better than ever, thought Issei happily. I must say, though, I've never heard such a thing happening before. True, all of my hosts had members of the opera sex flock to them, but I've never seen my host turn so many away, commented Drake. Eh, well, we already established I'm one of the strangest hosts you've ever had, thought Issei. True, but your natural lust and perversion. I never could have seen something like this happening, ever, admitted Drake. Will you die for me? Issei frowned slightly before replying. People can change, Drake. Even you, after so many years, have changed yourself, thought Issei, before finally reaching his classroom. I'm back, shouted Issei as he opened the door and walked into the room, causing everyone to gawk at him. Hyoto? Where have you been for the past month? questioned the teacher. She had an average appearance of average height, brown eyes, brown hair, reaching down to her shoulders and blades and rather slim figure. I've been on a journey of self-discovery, said Issei. Whoa, Hyoto got bigger, commented one of the boys in Issei's class. I see. In any case, it is good to have you back. But can you please take your seat so I may continue to listen, said the teacher, sternly. Of course. Excuse my disrespect, said Issei as he gave a charming smile. Is that really Hyoto? asked one of the girls in the class as Issei made his way to his seat. The rest of the class proceeded without any fanfare save for the occasional student glancing back at Issei. After class finished and the teacher had left, Issei was quickly swarmed by Mod Mod Modahama and Mutsada. And Matsuda. Come on. Where have you been, Issei asked Modahama, as his glasses gleam. Yeah, at first we thought you were just stuck in your bed or something, said Matsuda, getting a look of disgust from some of the girls sitting nearby. That's disgusting, shouted Moriyama. Quiet, you! You don't understand the pleasures of flesh, retorted Motohama. Ha! Huh. Oh, that's funny, guys, said Issei, getting the few people around him, namely Akira, Akiakiru, Mahama, and Kadase, to look at him oddly, along with Matsuda and Motohama. What do you mean, Issei? We're brothers in knowledge of the flesh, shouted Matsuda, in his shiny bald head gleaming. 
Yeah, but have either of you actually had sex? Asked Issei bluntly, getting a small blush out of Murayama and Karase, while Kiryu looked on in interest, as the two perverts hugged their heads momentarily. Hey, you haven't either, shouted the perverted duo, which only made Issei laugh. I wouldn't be so sure, teased Issei in a singing song voice, getting those around him to gape. No way, Yodo had sex, said Kadase in disbelief. I wonder if that's why he got so buff, whispered Murayama. Huh? Big talk, but where's your proof? asked Gei Kirio, as she looked at Issei with a grin, causing a few surrounding classmates to listen in the conversation turned to face Issei. Well, aside from the fact that I just did it before I came to school today and didn't have time to shower so you could practically smell her on me, said Issei, getting, a high fi getting the five of them to gape. Why don't I give you some physical evidence, questioned Issei rhetorically, as he took off his blazer, revealing his arms were straying at the fabric of white dress shirt. Issei then took his white dress shirt, leaving him only in a red t-shirt, revealing his arms in the classroom, which drew quite a few blushes from the girls, and a few looks of envy, mixed with grudging respect from the boys. Lastly, Issei turned around, so his back was facing everyone, before he took off his red shirt, getting a few gapes. Holy shit, Issei, what happened to your back? questioned Matsuda. For along Issei's back were numerous angry red scratch marks. Like I said, physical evidence. She's a wild cat in bed, so she can take one hell of a pounding, said Issei, as she put his shirt back on. Along with the rest of his clothes, the rest of the class was still gaping from what he said. No way. Was Hyoto serious? asked Marihama in a whisper. Hmm, they did look fairly genuine, said Kiryu, commenting on the marks that they just saw on his back. Lies, he say, there is no way that is the truth. Tell us it is a sick joke, cried Moama ignorantly. Nope, besides, this wasn't the first time we did it, and it won't be the last, said Issei casually. How? Who? Why? shouted Matsuda. Hmm? How? Well, you saw for yourself how the girls in the class react to my body, and you guys despite my preservedness. I'm not that bad of a guy. I'd do anything for my friends, said Issei with a frown, as he recalled the image of what was appearing more and more frequently in his hind. Will you die for me? As for who? I'll leave that end. I'll leave that until the end. The why, though, is because I have superior genetics, said Issei before going silent. Well, who is it? asked Mohama, both in excitement and envy. Kuroka, said Issei simply. That doesn't tell us anything, shouted the perverted duo. Oh, right. Did I forget to mention that Kuroka is Konako's big sister? Also, when I say big, I'm not just talking about her age in comparison to Konako, said Issei, getting Joss to drop throughout the classroom. No way, said Matsuda in shock. Konako has a big sister? Continued Motohama. Yep, although they aren't on the best of terms. Oh, and I'll say this now, she's mine, so don't even think about it, said Issei. I can't believe Hyoto had sex with someone, hmm, said Murayama. Well, if you want, I could show you what it's like, TZ say with a grin, getting Murayama to blush and splutter refusals. Oh, that's too bad. If Kuroka is to be believed, I'm apparently very good at it. I mean, just ask anyone who heard us near the edge of town this morning, said Issei, getting wide-eyed looks from everyone. Issei smirked at this before he felt something looking at his crotch, and looked to where he felt the gaze coming from, only to see Kiryu gazing at it with a blush. Impressive, isn't it? asked Issei, getting Kiryu to nervously chuckle and look away. Well, you're not short of power, that's for sure, said Kiryu, precisely getting Moriyama, Kanase, Motohama, and Matsuda to look at him in shock. To look at him in shock. Like I said, superior genetics in more ways than one, said Issei with a smirk, which caused Moriyama and Kanase to blush slightly at the implication, while Matsuda and Motohama hung their heads in shame and envy. And that is the end of chapter 3, Genetics. And that is where we are going to stop. Chapter 3, Genetics. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Okay, seriously. Hopefully you guys like this series just as much as I do. This isn't going to be the longest story in the world, but it's something that I truly wanted to read because it just sounds so fun. And I like reading these type of stories with all the emotion pent up because those are the parts why I finally hit hard. You know what I mean? So yes, for all the people who wanted all the other series, don't worry. They're all on my bucket list, so it really doesn't matter. Along with the suggestions that a lot of people gave me, like, what if, like, I can't wait to do, I'm going to start writing, like, my own stories. They're going to be a lot more aggressive and have more emotional moments and things like that. Like, a lot more rage, and I want him to have Bahamut, you know what I mean? 
hit things like that, those type of dragons, because those are absolutely amazing. But hopefully you guys are enjoying this series just as much as I am. And remember that stream, it will come in due time, okay? Once again, thank you so much for the support. With that stream, it'll come again on the Spartanic Arts DxD YouTube channel. I will be doing it. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe it'll be this week, maybe it'll be next week. We'll find out eventually okay i will let you know via community page or right before a video either way i'm going to do both at the same time this stream's gonna be huge i cannot wait for it i hope you guys are excited for it as i am thank you guys once again for all the support i know i keep thanking everybody for that constantly but you guys really don't know how much this youtube channel means with me along with supporting the other one as well called Ann palpowski where i do goku what if because i enjoy dragon ball just as much as i enjoy the other things so again, thank you so much for all the amazing, wonderful support. Let's try to hit a thousand likes. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. And without further ado, Spartanic Arts DXD out.